Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Smooth Coat Type Grooming Seminar. I am your hostess, Allison, and we are just going to give a minute for people to start joining us live, and then we will get started. So welcome, everyone. This is the Smooth Coated Grooming Seminar webinar. Hosted by Groomers Pro Wheatley Wears INB and Angels Grooming Apparel that I'm wearing. And just gonna give one or two more minutes to get started or get people loaded on, probably closer to half a minute, and then we are going to get started. Everything seems to be perfect until I start, and then there's always like a hair itching my face or something. So here we go. All right. Um Welcome everyone. I'm Allison of Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and I am here by the good graces of Groomers Pro Wheatley Wears I Envy and Angels Grooming Apparel and today we are going to talk about smooth coated breed type dogs. So um, all those smooth coated dogs that are out there and why grooming is really important for them as well. And we're gonna get started with our slideshow. Here we go. So here we are. Um, there's one of my favorite smooth coated dogs, a smooth Suki. You don't see many of them, but there she is. Okay, so things to note during our webinars is if this is the first time that you have joined us, you can use the Q&A function to submit questions. So this is at the bottom of your screen. Um, don't bother using the chat box. Those messages just get lost in cyberspace somewhere throughout the webinar. You can submit questions anytime and we answer them at the end, um, time permitting. Um, yeah, and so just as you go along, you can type them in and we will get to the questions. Um, as I said, these webinars that we have done on the four different coat types are sponsored by Groomers Pro Wheatley Wears and I Envy and Angels Grooming Apparel. And they feature products by I Envy, Angels, and Chris Christensen. Um, and we are really happy to have them. Please, they have given us discount codes that we will share with you at the end of the webinar um, that you can use on any products that we discuss here today, based, and anything that they have on any of their websites. They haven't limited to just stuff we talk about today. And they have been fantastic supporters. Um, please reach out to them. Please use the discount codes. And please tell them you'd like to see more webinars and what topics you'd like to see them on. Um, as well, you could reach out to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And same thing, tell us what you would like to see webinars on. We do a series of webinars as well um, that go a little bit more in depth into certain like more specialty products um, or more specialty grooming advice, training advice, et cetera. And please check those out as well. Okay, so we're gonna dive right in. And here we go, we're, gonna, we're talking about grooming the smooth coated dogs today. And, um, the thing that really gets me about smooth coated dogs when people say, oh, you know, I got a Frenchie or a Boxer or a Smooth Saluki because they're no work at all, is, you know, I find that um, kind of a misnomer. Smooth coated dogs leave absolutely nothing to the imagination. With coated dogs of any type, a terrier, a spaniel, a poodle, anything, you can cover small blemishes, thinning coat, an area where they may have scratched, or you know, a hot spot that's healing up. You can cover any of those things by some you know, fancy grooming, some remedial grooming by moving the hair, letting a little bit of hair grow in around where the blemish might be. With smooth coated dogs, you do not have that option. It is there for you to see. So in order to keep that hair like glistening with no bald spots and like no areas of lighter coat that we see often on like Dobermans and especially boxers are big ones, Frenchies as well. Um, you do need to do regular brushing, regular bathing and conditioner is only going to help you, especially entering into this time of year when um, it's a lot sunnier out, um, they're getting a lot more walks, they're getting more dirt and grime from just being walked into their coat, they're getting a little bit sunburnt, maybe they're shedding out because it is spring summer. All these different reasons are why conditioner is also really important. 
Um, smooth coated dogs, they can also get rubs where they've rubbed coat out on the top of their nose, tops of the ears, and the tops of the tail. Um, this can be very, very apparent. It looks kind of leathery often. It's awful, awful for the show ring, but even in the salon, even if you're just grooming your own smooth coated dog at home, it just doesn't look as nice, right? Um, but with regular grooming and using conditioner, they're not as much of a problem. Um, elbow calluses on those bigger breeds, boxers, um, Dobermans, Great Danes, Mastiffs, um, they are a, a big problem as well. And especially again, going into this time of year because it's warmer out and they don't wanna lay on the beds that we provided them. They wanna lay on like the, the hard surfaces, like the tile floor, the cement outside, you know, they want to lay on your patio rather than on the bed you put on the patio for them. But again, using conditioner, softening up those calluses are going to make them look better. As well, we can show you a few things you can use to like cover up some of those blemishes. Um, with smooth coated dogs, as all dogs, ear, tail, and tooth maintenance is of utmost importance. But again, it's so much harder to hide an ear infection, like on a Frenchie whose ears are standing right up. You can see that it's dirty. You can smell it when you walk up to them, all those things. Um, and eye staining. Nothing, you know, really wrecks the look of that dog is that boxer that just has eye staining, staining between the toes on those like white terriers, smooth fox terriers, um, your chihuahuas, etc. Um, and in those bully breeds, the staining in the wrinkles, the staining in the eyes, the staining around their tail is a big problem. Um, and we are going to address that here today in our webinar. Okay, so first of all, I want to talk to you about prepping the smooth coat. So excuse me, things that we can do um, before we bath them and on a regular basis, right? So for dogs that have, you know, a little bit of staining, you can use Saving Grace. I like to use Saving Grace straight on all the staining and really work it in. Let it sit for 10 minutes and then um, add shampoo, scrub it up, make some um, suds, leave it in for another 10 minutes and then rinse it out. Um, Mystic Ear is a great ear cleaner. Um, like we said, ear cleaning is really important. We're going to talk to you about how to use eye envy um, for not only the staining in their eyes, around their wrinkles, in between their toes, and around their butt, um, and how you can use it every day to just really, really keep those wrinkles smooth and fresh. Um, I like to use an extra fine knife um, and a stone on a stick. Uh, for my smooth coated dogs to just like continually rake out the undercoat. So just like the other coat types that we've talked about, if you do rake out that undercoat weekly, it is really going to help you just keep that coat rolling. You want that new coat always coming in and that lighter, fuzzier coat, because they do blow their coat, um, coming out at all times. And we are going to go through the slides and then I will give you a demo on how to do all of these things with our little friend here, BB. Okay, so brushes and tools for the smooth coat. Um, this is where I just think we have some excellent tools for you. I love the Ionic brush. So the Ionic brush has these brass pins in the center and bore bristle on the outside, and they just do such a great job of getting out all the excess and dead hair. Um, again, we're gonna demo this later. Um, the Andreas brush is also a great one. But where the tools I think are just absolutely important here are the razor shaper and the artisan safety thinner. So the razor shaper is a great tool. And again, we're going to, we'll demo this after we go through the slides because the razor shaper um, is a straight shear. So you could clean up um, whiskers with it, any like really long pieces of hair that might be on the end of a tail of like, um, a chihuahua or one of the bully breeds, something like that. But if you see how it has these teeth here and the teeth closer together here, it also has a razor edge where you can really shape the necks on your boxer, on your smooth fox terrier, on your smooth collie. All of these breeds just would really benefit from you using the razor shaper. And again, we will demo that shortly. Um, 
The Safety Thinner, another innovative product. The thing about the Safety Thinner is that on most thinning shears, this blade is sharp. And on the Safety Thinner, this blade is dull. So this is not sharp at all. I can run my finger on it. I'm not gonna cut myself. It's completely dull. Now, what that does is first of all, it's a great thinner for people just starting out because it's not very aggressive. So you can use it on all coat types. You can have it in your salon if you have a new groomer um, so that because it's just not as an aggressive thinner. But the reason that I like it for smooth coats, and I think that it is a must, is that when you are cleaning up the cowlicks on the sides of the neck, um, any excess hair on the tail, anywhere that you're gonna clean up hair, with the safety thinner, you're not gonna put a hole in the cowlick um, unless you really try. Like a lot of other thinners, they're more aggressive, they're great for the other coat types, but on those cowlicks on the smooth coated dogs, it just, can leave a hole before you've even started. Um, now, this is a time that we should all be practicing, you know, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, um, you know, so we get used to those holes. I always suggest that when you're trimming your smooth coated dog for a dog show, that you're going to do it at least five days out from the show. So if you're, the dog show is on Saturday, you're not gonna do it Friday because typically it takes three days for like a hole like that to start being covered in with hair. So people will do it on a Thursday or a Friday morning and so that it's bald until Sunday night and that's when the dog show's over. So do yourself a favor, do that kind of grooming on a Monday or Tuesday before the dog show. Of course, there's no dog shows right now, but now's the time to practice just to make sure that you know how to use the tool properly and see how long it does take your dog to have that coat grow in. Um, so bathing and conditioning. So like I said, we are always going to recommend that you use a conditioner um, with your smooth coated dogs because it's just going to help add some condition to them. BB's looking at me like I'm crazy. Um, so I like Spectrum 5 shampoo and conditioner. It's formulated for the smooth coated dog. Um, it just has extra moisturizers in there to really help keep their skin really um, healthy. Peace and Kindness shampoo is a fantastic shampoo and probably my go-to for the smooth coated dog um, because they can get like little blemishes, they can get mosquito bites, they can get so many things, especially this time of year. And Peace and Kindness with 30 parts per million of colloidal silver just does such a great job of cleaning up any of those little blemishes if they get little pimples on their chins, um, any of those kind of things. Peace and Kindness just like is going to clean it up and keep it, uh, the skin just perfect. It's just going to clean up any little blemish, help with those mosquito bites, things like that. If I'm using Peace and Kindness shampoo, I would probably follow it up with after you bathe, after bath is what I call it. Now, the reason I typically recommend after you bathe is because it cuts down drying time by up to 30%. Obviously, we're not gonna worry about that with our smooth coated dogs, um, but it's just a nice light conditioner regardless. Um, the other shampoo that I really like is Day to Day shampoo and conditioner. They have colloidal oatmeal in them and the colloidal oatmeal is so apparent that a lot of times people will um, come to us at a show or maybe like phone the company and complain because there's like sediment at the bottom and that's actually the colloidal oatmeal. You can actually see the oatmeal in it. So that is a fantastic shampoo. Um, it's really, really moisturizing and just really therapeutic for your dog. Um, so if you have a dog who is always greasy. So for instance, the smooth coated Saluki that you saw on the first slide, she was fed a raw diet. She sometimes liked to sleep on her raw diet rather than eat it. And she would have some chicken grease or meat grease somewhere, right? And clean start, boom, absolutely positively done on the first try. You didn't have to worry about it. You knew it was gonna remove all of that gross, chickeny, whatever. So, you know, our smooth coated dogs, they can, get into things on the driveway. They can roll on things in the beach. They can sleep on their raw diet. Any reason that they might get greasy, you know, maybe with COVID and some homeschooling, maybe your daughter's been putting makeup on your dog. That could happen too. Um, I mean, or your son could be putting makeup on it. And Clean Star is just gonna help get rid of all that. Um, but some of my favorite things for the smooth coated dog, and especially those bully breeds, is happy eyes and I envy tear stain remover and 
facial cleanser. So the reason I love both of these products is because I do not like to rinse my Bully Breed's face with water. Um, I just think it can lead to a lot of problems. So I like to use a face cloth to wash and to rinse my Bully Breed's face. The thing about both of those products is they are great for cleaning between the wrinkles, also, if the, you know those bully breeds have those big eyes, obviously you don't want to put it in the eye, but they are both completely safe if you did accidentally get either one of those products in your dog's eye. To me, absolutely positively important. I have always used a tearless shampoo like Happy Eyes before I discovered Eye Envy Facial Cleanser on all of my dogs. When I'm washing my poodles' faces, terriers' faces, Aussie, Sheltie, whatever it was, I always use a tearless shampoo. But with my bully breeds, I put the tearless shampoo on a damp face cloth. Um, I obviously have face cloths just for my dogs. I prefer the super thin, cheapest ones where you get like 10 in a pack um, for like $5.99 or $4.99 or however you get the cheapest, thinnest ones because the thinnest ones are easier to put on your finger and get between those wrinkles. That's another thing that we will demo when we get to the demo portion. Okay, so we're gonna go a little bit more in depth um, about the bully breeds and washing their faces and between the wrinkles. So the wrinkles on those bully breeds, so I'm talking about bull mastiffs, mastiffs, French bulldogs, bulldogs, anything with that wrinkly face, your sharpays, anything like that. It is just like so important that we're not getting water like up their nostrils. It can just, you know, with their um, shortened noses, you know, those brachial breeds plus sharpays, etc. They just you know, they have problems if you get even a titch of water up their nose. Um, so I always like to use face cloths. And their faces on those wrinkles, to me, they need to be washed at least once a day. I like to wash mine twice a day. Um, and the way I do it, it simply takes less than a minute right? Um, obviously, if you have a dog that has some problems, it's going to take more than a minute because you might put a little bit of the INV powder in there, etc. And again, we're going to demo that. Um, so the reason that we're washing their faces more frequently is they can get yeast type infections. So the same kind of infection they can get in their ear and from their eyes, they can get in the wrinkles, um, not only in their face, but their wrinkles around their butt. And when they have the that red stripe around their tail wrinkle, that's often just a yeast infection that got in there from not being cleaned. They can get ingrown hairs, obviously staining, and it smells bad. We don't want our Frenchies, whether we are a salon groomer sending it out the door, we're going to shows, they're our family pet, or all three, we do not want walking up to our bully breed and having the face smell bad. Um, so I, again, like I do not like to rinse the face with a shower type attachment. I like to use a face cloth. Um, I also recommend having baby wipes. Baby wipes are good in a pinch. Say, you know, you got home later than you expected, or maybe there's something going on in your home and you just don't have time. Just keep some baby wipes around. They're really good for just like going in between the wrinkles and just helping you like keep up what you have already started. Great for going on the road, great for emergencies. And um, of course, they are safe because they're made for babies. Okay, so now we're gonna go into treating problem areas. So like we talked about, when we're treating problem areas um, with our smooth coated dogs, it is just that much more apparent, right? So we're panicky because we can see the problem. Um, I like the IMB tear stain kit. Um, I'm gonna show you a, a little bit of a yeasty problem that BB has and how I would use the IMB kit on that. Um, Saving Grace is great for any kind of staining, maybe you have a young dog or you know um, somebody that pees, a boy that pees on their leg or something or a girl that came in season. And it, Saving Grace is really good for helping remove those kinds of stains. Like I said, peace and kindness shampoo, if they have a blemish, if they have mosquito bites, if you know, even you wanna wash around their calluses to just get some colloidal silver in there, washing between the toes with peace and kindness is amazing. And the peace and kindness spray and or gel is also a great addition because you, you, know, you can just spray it every day. So say you're bathing your smooth coated dog once a week, but every day you can spray it with the peace and kindness spray or the and or use the gel. So 
excuse me, people ask me, why do we have the spray and the gel? Well, for me, I like to use the spray, you know, like say my dog had several mosquito bites or maybe they just all over were maybe a little bit itchy or um, they were having a bit of a, an allergic reaction to pollen or food or whatever. I am going to use the spray. Um, I might use the spray if I thought their eyes were running more excessively. I might use a spray between their toes. But if I had a dog that had, um, you know, like a bigger mosquito bite or their calluses on the elbow, that's when I would use the gel because the gel can like stick to those areas better. So that's when I would use each one of those products. Now, of course, the Eye Envy Kit is absolutely amazing for the smooth coated dogs and the bully breeds because it really stops that staining and you can use it on so many different areas. Basically, the INV um, kit is designed for the yeasty eye staining that we get. And this is can be just be from excess tearing. It can be from, you know, excess sweating. It's a little bit hotter, or maybe you have a dog that just likes to dig in the dirt all the time, like BB here, and they just get some yeasty infection in their wrinkles. There can be lots of different reasons why they get these yeast infections. Same, maybe you live in a damp area, maybe your dog is licking their feet. That could be why they get the staining between their toes. Um, they could have the staining because they're teething, right? So the growth of the teeth is like kind of pushing up on their faces and that causes staining. It could be your water. Some people live in places where the water is, um, has more minerals in it, etc. It could be a food reaction. So a lot of people think that, you know, they could be allergic to their food, they could, and if they're not allergic to their food, maybe they're allergic to their treats, you have to be careful. Um, and it could also be from external parasites like fleas, I find that to be the less common one. You know, if you think that your dog has um, excessive tearing or excessive yeast staining, I certainly recommend that you take your dog to a veterinarian and try to rule out food or environmental allergies, different things like that. For me, when I talk about any of these things, um, you know, always talking to your veterinarian is my go-to, and then I'm going to try to figure out the problem cosmetically from there. Um, as well, I would like to mention that, you know, when we're talking about different products and how to use them, you have to remember that um, if you ask 10 different people how to do something or how to choose something or what how they would do it, you're probably going to get 20 different answers. And my answer is just my opinion. Um, but, you know, I have been involved in the sport of purebred dogs since I was seven years old. And, you know, I've won best in shows on breeds and been number one. Um, all breeds in Canada. I've won 550 best in shows all over the world. So I do have the experience with lots of different breeds to back up what I'm telling you. Um, I'm always interested to hear what has worked for you. And please feel, share to, feel free to share that information at any time. Okay, so now we're going to talk about styling our smooth coated dog. So um, there's not much to styling our smooth coated dog. Um, like I said, I love the Ionic brush and I love working in like some ice on ice um, leave in detangling and finishing spray. Um, especially this time of year because it does have UV protection in it, which is amazing. As well, I like to use Quench is a leave-in conditioner that also shines, like makes the coat shiny. Um, and both of these are great options for your smooth coated dog. Again, I always like to brush the hair, which I will demo and show you why I want the hair brushed in a certain way. Um, I did have a question this week about the Ionic brush because a lot of people um, believe that you can only use it dry. You can't use it with any spray in conditioners, etc. And that's because sometimes um, people think that the brass pins are just going to oxidize and that could be a problem. Well, I have never had that problem. I have always used my brush with products. Um, I do, uh, you know, sometimes my dog has even been quite wet, like I had a Carrie Blue Terrier and I would use it to Marcella's coat and that he would be quite wet at that point. Now, obviously I would just like tap it on a towel or something to dry it off. 
I find the biggest thing with the Ionic brush is I keep mine like in a Tupperware container, like a plastic container with a lid that's lined with paper towel because I feel that picks up the excess moisture and has, you know, kept my brushes. I've never had a problem with them oxidizing or anything like that happening to them. Um, and I think that that is really, really helpful, especially I live in a humid area. I live in a rainforest. And also when we're traveling to dog shows, sometimes it's hot, you know, or where our tack box is, it can be hot, then it can be cold. It can be an air conditioning. It can be, the sun can be hitting it, you know, even at an outdoor dog show, the sun can come around. So it goes, so by keeping it in the box, the paper towel just kind of absorbs any excess moisture in there. And that's always worked for me. So I've always used mine uh, wet and dry, never had a problem. Okay, so usually if you've been on any of our, on our other webinars, we talk about the stylized dry. So um, there really is no stylized dry for the smooth coated dogs, um, but I do recommend that you dry them. So I don't like to just leave them to their own devices. I like to dry them. So I'm gonna towel dry them. They're the only breed that you can towel dry them kind of any which way. Then I like to brush their coat all in the direction that it should be going in. And I do like to dry them. I like to dry them because, you know, some of them can have really thick hair under their, ch under their chin, around their butts. Um, and you don't want them to get hot spots there because this just stayed damp for a day and a half, especially on a rainy day. Um, also, some of our longer tailed smooth coated breeds, they can get a cold in their tail. So if you've ever seen that, that's when the tail, you know, you see it on Beesless and Weimaraners a lot. Um, their tail will go straight out a little bit and then boom, drop right down. It's because basically there's inflammation from that tail was cold. They automatically curled up in a little ball and where there was pressure on that tail, it just got inflamed there and it can take up to a week for them to start feeling better and using their tail. And what happens is, well, first of all, it's painful for our dogs, right? And, you know, my vet will put my dog on Medicam at that point because he says it's quite painful. There happens a lot in bull mastiffs and mastiffs as well. Those big breeds that people don't dry them. And as well, what if you've done it before a show? There goes your entry. So like, first of all, it can be quite painful for your dog if the judge were to go over their tail, which they're still obliged to do. Um, and that can give your dog a bad reaction, but it just, you're not gonna win. It's gonna look really, really awful in the ring. So making sure that you dry them is really important. Um, Using a dryer also will part the hair. So if you're looking for any nicks or scratches or Excuse me, my throat's getting a bit dry. If you're looking for any nicks, scratches, maybe um, you know, you know, your dog was out in the brambles, or like, like, like I said, some mosquito bites, or you know, maybe a little hot spot. If your dog's been scratching, it will part the hair, and you can kind of like find any little um, skin problems that are below you know, that aren't poking through the coat yet, and beat them to the punch. Start treating them with some peace and kindness right then and there. Go to your vet if you think that you need to, right? So it's real drawing your smooth coated dog is not complicated, but definitely a step I think that should be done. Okay, so there's lots of things that we can use to finish off our smooth coated dog. Um, shine for sure, absolutely positively my 100% go to, makes them instantly shiny. You can use it on their toenails, you can use it on their body, you can use it absolutely everywhere. You can spray it in their hand, work it over their face. It's amazing. And mine is gone. I don't, I use it even on my poodle all the time and I couldn't find it anywhere today. Uh, Chris sticks, which I will demonstrate, which are absolutely amazing. Um, and you don't get the makeup on your coat, but they go on, they stay on, they're great. Um, white on white chalk for obviously for our whiter dogs, when we chalk them, cholesterol to hold that chalk in. Um, the goat hair chalk brush is great for applying the, cho the chalk. Um, black mask is like a black Vaseline, great for toenails, great for those masks on our boxers, Dobermans, anything where you just want it to be shiny. Um, the color effects chalk blocks are great for covering up. The ice cream cover up, which mine is right over here, comes in um, several different colors. This is black, um, white ice and black ice spray and the Michelangelo grooming sticks for just like getting rid of those little tiny hairs that are distracting. Um, they, they are really, really precise. So those are some of the products that I would use to finish the smooth coated dog. Okay, so here's a little summary of what we've been through so far. And then I'm gonna demo some of the things that I've been talking about. 
Remember that even though they seem wash and wear, there are things we can do to ensure that our smooth coated dogs always look the best. Blemishes and being out of condition, so i.e. our dogs have been shedding and we see those big lighter patches on the side of the neck, are very, very obvious on smooth coated dogs. And especially since they do take less time and work, there is no reason why we can't make them look fantastic. So you have an Afghan hound that might take you two, four, six hours a week on maintenance. You can do that maintenance on your Frenchie, on your Mastiff, on your Smooth Coat Chihuahua in an hour, right? And an hour a week to have your dog look absolutely positively glorious. Um, a well-groomed smooth-coated breed will still stand out in the show ring compared to a smooth-coated breed that is not well-groomed and not in condition. So we get a lot of questions from people like with smooth coat chihuahuas, like how do I make my dog stand out in the ring? Make it look perfect. It doesn't take a long time. And of course, do not overlook the importance of nails, teeth, and ears. All right, so I'm going to demo a Few, I'm just going to check the next slide. Yeah, I'm going to demo a few of the things um, that we've talked about so far and then move on to the next part. So while I demo, I'm going to put up our Angel's Grooming Apparel because you're going to see me wearing it. Um, so Angel's Grooming Apparel is one of our sponsors and I have to say I'm absolutely amazed at their products. So um, they're comfortable, they're mesh at the back, they're stylish, they come in great colors. And as groomers, we know that if we look good, we feel good, if we feel good, we're gonna put out a better product. The hair absolutely does not stick to any of it, um, which is great because you can groom your dog and you can meet your client to hand the dog off and you're not covered in dog hair, right? So we want to look professional all the time. Um, Angel is an actual person. She talked to groomers and she figured out how to use the best products, have stylish things, and she wanted to keep everything local. So the garments are made in LA. She's from LA and she also created the garments. So like if you're working five or six days a week, you can have interchangeable pieces so that you don't have to wear the same thing every day day and still look and feel great. Um, I'm just going to show you some of the more popular patterns. So there's Angel and that very, very popular damask pattern that you see in the gray and the pink. Um, they look great. Um, I asked for one of those, but it was so popular I wasn't allowed to have one, but here we are. All right, so now while you look at, oh, I'm going to get rid of that slide anyway, huh? but you'll see me wearing the Angel's grooming. So I'm going to stop sharing and Katie if you want to tell me if you can't see that's my lamp um, so here is the lovely and talented baby that decided to be our model today um, yeah that's good are you doing anything um, near the feet um, not right now okay Do you want it down um, so that yeah, so that gets most of her in the shot. And then if you go to the feet, you can put it down a little more. Okay. And if you're going to do anything with the face, if you can move a little closer. Yeah, um, when I do the face, I will turn her around. Great. All right. All right, so when we're talking about the smooth coated breed, here we go. And you can see um, I haven't groomed her since... I decided that I was going to do smooth coat. So about four weeks ago was the last time she was groomed other than washing her face every day because that's really important. But I wanted there to be some hair so I could show you the difference of a well-groomed dog. So using um, a stone on a stick, oops, she's not supposed to be following me around. Baby, darling. Using a stone on a stick, um, the first thing that we would do on our smooth coated dog. So you could do this before the bath is when I typically like to do it. I'm gonna take my stone on a stick and I'm going to rake it. I'm going in the direction that the hair grows. And I am just simply using the stone on the stick, which is pumice stone. And look at all that dead hair that I am pulling out. And so imagine this is only four weeks since she's been groomed and she had been groomed at that point every week um, and just think of all that dead hair that I just keep getting out. So this is the first thing that I would do and I would do it absolutely everywhere all over her dog like and you even have to do like the top of her head because 
obviously the head is the introduction of our dog to our friends, to our family, to a judge, anyone. So you're gonna do this all over the whole dog. I'm not gonna bore you and do all of her. I'll do it after the webinar. And I'm gonna reach across you, sorry. And I'm always going to brush with my ionic brush in the direction that the hair is growing. And you can see how already that's making her shinier, tidier. Already you could see here, it's all right, bibs. Here where the coat was standing up a little bit for, it was a little bit wrinkly on her butt already, that's starting to lay closer to her body. So simply I'm just dragging this through and you wanna hold, you don't wanna do it like this, like not holding onto the skin because see how the skin moves. You wanna hold the skin nice and tight. And I'm using about a medium pressure when I do this. As the stone gets built up with hair, once in a while you might just wanna rub the stone like on the edge of your grooming table and then you have another surface to keep stripping the hair out. All right, so that is the first part. So now when we go to use our artisan safety thinner, Biebs, so you can see how she has this cowlick down the side of her neck, right? So I think it's gonna be easier to sit in front of her. Good girl. Good girl, Beeps. Beeps is such a good girl. All right, so I'm just gonna bring you a little bit closer. So I know, darling, good girl. So we can see this cowlick here. Like see how much hair is right here on the side of the neck? I'm gonna hold her ear up out of the way. And with the, good girl, with the safety thinner, I'm just going to take that cowlick off to make it look nice and neat. So with the safety thinner, I can take that cowlick off, but I haven't left a big hole here. So if you've ever trimmed your smooth coated dog and you've had a big bald spot in the, where the cowlick came off, using the safety thinner, all, you know, you would have to be really aggressive to get that hole, which is why I love these safety thinners. I'm a very experienced groomer. I love them for new groomers because they're not aggressive, but even for me, I love them for smooth coated dogs because they just don't leave that hole in the cow, in the cow. Good girl. All right. So now I'm going to show you just an outstanding product for the smooth coated dog. Um, and especially a thicker smooth coated dog, like a white one, like a smooth fox terrier, smooth collies. These are really, really fantastic, but I use them on my Frenchies as well. And it is the artisan safety thinner. So you can see how I have already stripped out um, a lot of the undercoat with the stone on the stick. So now I want to go in and I really want to shape this neckline, right? I wanna give it some de definition. So I'm using the safety thinner pointing down, so I'm using the coarser side here. And again, I'm going in the direction, I'm holding this, the shear shut. I'm going in the direction that the coat grows in, and I'm just using it to really shape it into this shoulder. And again, see the hair that I'm getting out? So once I've done it with the wider end, now I'm gonna do it with the finer end pointing down. Same thing. And again, I'm using less than a medium pressure and maybe on her butt. I want to thin out some of this hair. Um, I can also use the Artisan Safety Thinner on her pants. So again, this is another area where people get um, a lot of hair and then they get a lot of holes in the hair because their thinning shear is just too aggressive. And with the Artisan Safety Thinner, you're not going to get that. You can get this really nice line and you're not going to leave a bald spot. So these are two great tools that I love to use on lots of different breeds, but I just think on smooth coated breeds where when you put a hole in the coat, it's that much more apparent. It just works really, really well.
just to uh, clarify, I think you called it the safety thinner, but what she was referring to there was the razor shaper. Oh, yep, that was, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> um, that is the razor shaper. So the safety thinner was for cutting the cowlick and the razor shaper was where I took the hair off the, good girl, off the side of the neck. So here's what I'm talking about because BB, um, hadn't been groomed in four weeks. I have this lighter colored hair. So I'm going to make her as close as possible to you. So this lighter colored hair here would not be as apparent if um, I had kept up her stripping and not given her a month off. So one of the things that I really like is using the Chris stick. The Chris stick um, is really great for smooth coated dogs. So I'm going to hold my hand here so you can see what it looks like. So it's basically color on a popsicle stick. Um, you have to get it wet. You can simply get it wet by spraying it with water. I'm going to spray it with some quench because it's handy. And then you don't have to get makeup on your hand and you can just simply use it and look how quickly it just covers up all of that light hair and just quickly obviously French Bulldogs need some brindling but you don't want that really really white hair and see how quickly that happened now I like to have two different ionic brushes I like to have one that's clean and then one that I use for color so I have a smaller one that I it's the same ionic brush like the same kind of brush as the smaller one and that's the one I use like once I put color in I just go back over it with the brush to make sure I've worked it into, I know, to every part of the coat. So these Chris sticks are absolutely amazing. Um, they come in a little, um, they come packaged like this and you can keep them in this little bag. I suggest you get, you don't, I don't like to leave it like loose. So once I've used it, I either try to put it back in that, the original packaging or just like a Ziploc bag. Just remember, you need to get it wet each time before you use it. Again, you can use quench, give her a little mist all over, and then you're gonna go back to your original ionic brush and you're going to work the coat in the direction that you want it to go. When grooming the smooth coated dog, I don't like to take the neck hair and wrap it down. I like it to go straight back to kind of make the angle of the shoulder look even better. So there we go. And so when we talk about regular brushing, you know, I'm brushing probably a little bit firmer than medium pressure because I really, really want to start working that excess undercoat out. It's quite apparent on her because like I said, I did give her a month off trimming so you could actually see some hair coming out. Go down the legs, go down the front legs, and there we are. All right, so I don't wanna bore you with brushing BB now that we have the technique down. So I'm going to go back here, back here, and share the screen. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about eye envy and how important it is for smooth-coated dogs, especially for these bully breeds. Um, so if you want tear stains, stinky beards, if you have more than one dog, um, staining between the toes, coat staining, discoloration to disappear, this product system is absolutely fantastic. I have always personally recommended colloidal silver for staining as, as it's completely safe. So I've always recommended it that you just mist it near your dog's face for a dog that has um, eye staining. And I've also recommended some other like long, um, long used recipes that do actually work but they're kind of hit and miss depending on how people mix them up. And they basically contain a lot of the same products, all natural products that the eye envy system uses. So eye envy is perfect for smooth coated dogs who are prone to tear stains and especially for ones that have folds like the bully breed. So this is how I would use it. Boom, 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 boom. And we're just gonna turn her more towards the camera. Good girl. And we are going to stop sharing. So here is little BB and her little face. Okay, so the first thing that we want to talk about is 
the staining that can get between the folds. So we're talking, we can see her face here and here, I know, darling, here is the fold around her face. And even though her face was washed this morning, look at the yeast and gunk that you can get out. Boop, boop, boop and not very long because she has a little bit of a yeast infection going on right here. She loves to dig holes and shove her whole face in the water bottle, the water bowl. So the first thing I like to do is I'm going to take the Eye Envy um, facial cleanser, tear stain, put a nice pump of it, it foams up. That's one pump into my hand and I'm not putting it in her eye, but if it got in her eye, it'd be completely fine. And using my finger, I'm just going to put it in those folds around her face. So I'm gonna put it in the fold above her nose and then in the fold, she's not being super cooperative, around her eye. There we go. And so that's easy peasy. Now I do not like to use a hose, like I said. So I just have a face cloth and I just have them, you know, a bunch of them for my dogs, stop. And then with my finger, so this is damp, wet, warm, and I'm just going to follow and go again between those folds around her nose and between the folds around the eye. And there we go. I'd like to do her little chin. Also, if you did have a dog that had staining between the toes, I would do the same thing. I would use a cleanser between the toes. Same with the wrinkle around the butt, the same way. Cleanser, work it in, then a face cloth to rinse it out. Your next step is to use the INV Tear Stain Removing Solution and the applicator pads. Now people ask me, why do we use the applicator pads? Why do we buy them from INV instead of using a makeup round? Because once you feel them, you'll understand. These are not your cotton round that breaks apart that you use your put your own toner on with. These are thinner and the, the solution doesn't, like it does obviously go on it, but it doesn't soak into it and not come out like, so I'm going to put some drops of this on here. Come on babes, turn around. So this has colloidal silver in it. Um, it has boric acid powder. And again, I'm going to go around that same wrinkle with this and then around the upper wrinkle easy peasy and we are done and you do not need to rinse that part out same thing if we wanted to do between the toes we would just simply do between the toes and or around the butt next i'm going to use the INV powder it has boric acid in it which is a um pharmaceutical grade drying agent. So that's why it's great. It works on those yeasty problems that they have. Um, it has golden seal in it. It has echinacea in it. It has eye bright in it. And they sell it with this great little applicator brush. So what I like about the applicator brush is I like this little one because it gets right between the wrinkles really easily. Um, and also the product doesn't fall out of it, right? So you could use your finger. You don't need to buy the brush, but this works great, you're not wasting any product, the product doesn't fall out. Beebs doesn't like this part, um, she just doesn't like being on camera. Okay, so I'm gonna try to hold her bead, babes. Okay, so now I have this yeasty part between right here in her wrinkle, and I'm just going to take, no, you're fine, babes. And I'm just going to like dab the powder all around there and just, lightly brush it in with my finger. I don't want to irritate um, that little red and flame spot any more than I have to. I'm going to tap some there. If you had a dog that had eye staining, you would put it right here where the eye staining is. And I'll demo that. So you put it right in there. And see, she doesn't mind because it's not irritated right there. So I have it right in there. And you can see how it's going to dry up any yeastiness and you want to make sure that you get it on both sides of the hair. So not just on the top part of the hair, but underneath as well, because obviously the yeast is growing underneath as well. And you can work it in with the brush really nice and gentle. I can go right up to her eye rim because I know it's completely safe. And you would just leave it on like that. 
I would let her shake it off. You're gonna do it once a day until the staining is gone and then do it once a week for maintenance. Same thing, if she had any yeastiness between her toes, I would just dab it between her toes and away we go. So you can see um, just this is an incredible product. They make a beard product too, which is just a two part system where you would use the original facial cleanser that I showed you. And then just simply step two is a beard stain remover spray. Really easy to use to spray it in the beard. Not only does the beard smell better, but it gets rid of that red yeasty um, look that a lot of those bearded breeds get. So the Eye Envy kit contains the um, tear stain removing solution and the applicator pads, the powder, and one of the applicator brushes. And it is an incredible, incredible product, completely natural. It does an amazing job on all, not only tear staining, the staining between the wrinkles, the staining in the toes, and the staining around that crucial butt tail wrinkle that they get. Um, the kit retails for $30 in the US and only $35 in Canada. It comes all those things in this little nifty bag so you can keep it all together. And then I think that the facial cleanser that you would buy separately, it retails for $8 and in the US and I think $10 in Canada. And as well, you're going to share a discount code with you so you can see um, exactly how much money you can save. All right, so we're going to move on so I can get to some of your questions. So I demonstrated the eye and to you. Um, there's a few more slides on it. So facial cleanser, remember one pump, it contains colloidal silver. Um, you can use it on puppies and kittens because it's completely natural. So the staining, um, so if you have red staining, on a dark colored dog like her in better lighting, you would be able to see this. She doesn't have staining, but if you did see the staining, it's still gonna work, right? Those darker dogs can stain, the staining just looks different. On a white dog, the staining, especially if you've used a bluing shampoo or a whitening shampoo or any kind of bleach, the staining will first turn pink before it turns white because those other products have made the coat more porous, right? Um, but you will see results. So the second step is the solution and the wipes, and that was not rinsed. So the facial cleanser went on and I simply rinsed it with a face cloth. And that's how I would do it every, every day of the week. I wouldn't rinse it with a hose, even like on my coated breeds, I don't. I just find it, it's not as convenient for me to do it that way. Um, so this cleans the affected area and starts fighting um, the bacteria with its natural antibacterial properties. It's also a natural astringent which helps close up the hair shaft so that it doesn't stain anymore. Um, it's topically applied so you don't, your dog doesn't eat it, but um, if you didn't get any in their eye or they licked it off, their feet, it's completely safe for them. So the powder you um, use around the eyes and between the skin folds, like I showed you on BB, very important with those wrinkly faced bully breeds. And you can use it on that. You know, people are always asking me, how do I get rid of that staining around the tail? That's a huge problem in salons. You always get dogs that have that staining around the tail and you're, the owners want it cleaned up and gone. This product will work for you. Um, it's a treatment, it's not a cover up. Uh, it contains a mild cleanser, it's antibacterial, and so because it's antibacterial, it helps inhibit the growth of bacteria. So it's removing the stain, but what happens with other products that um, you apply topically like bleach, you might be removing the stain, but you're not doing anything to prevent the hair from restaining. So you're removing the stain, but in the process of bleaching or whitening, you're opening up the hair shaft. So the dog just restains quicker and faster because the hair shaft is blown open. A hair shaft is actually under a microscope a lot like scales on a fish. You have the overlapping scales well whitening bleaching products blow that shaft open right like that's how they get rid of the staining but they leave the shaft open and because they're doing nothing antibacterial nothing to stop that yeasty infection it stains that much quicker that's why people always say well it just got redder faster that's why with this product it's not covering it up it's not it's just removing the infection but at the same time it's closing the hair shaft which makes it harder to stain there's a whole kit, like I told you. I just wanna get through this quickly. I mentioned the beard stain remover. Um, and like I said, 
nobody likes tear stains. Um, you can incorporate this into your salon. You can incorporate it to your, into your dog every day at home. Great for show dogs. Um, you can offer kits for clients to buy and use at home. It's just a wonderful product because it is so versatile. So here are the low down on the hoe down, the products that I recommend for general smooth care, coat care and styling. BB is like saying, I've been on this table for an hour and I'm bored now, but she'll taste my cat if I put her down. Um, some more products. So all of these products and many, many more products um, are available through Groomers Pro and Wheatley Wares. Um, and of course, I Envy and Angels Grooming Apparel have their own respective websites as well. Um, so you can go to those for more information or to order or order everything at once from either Groomers Pro and or Wheatley Wares. So if you use the code with Groomers Pro, I Envy, Angels Grooming Apparel on any of their websites, you can use the code SMOOTH15 for 15% off any and all of the products we mentioned here, all the products they have on any of their websites um, from now until basically midnight on June 7th, right? Like we said, I Envy and, and Angels have their own website. You can use it there as well if you're just interested in those products um, or you just want more information on those products before you order everything at once from Groomers Pro. Um, Wheatley Wears, they are absolutely amazing too. Use the code LEDSA for 10% off until July 1st. And I believe they also have free shipping um, if you get, get a minimum order. They also carry all the Chris Christensen products I Envy and Angels Grooming Apparel. They have many, many other products too. They have some amazing products and that code isn't just for what we've mentioned here. It's mentioned for anything on their website. Um, as well, I am Allison of Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. Um, I have courses, I have free courses. I have courses on grooming, on scissoring, on clipping, on poodles, on spaniels, on setters, on pet trims that you use in the salon. And you can visit my website, which is leadingedgedogshowacademy.com, and you can use the code WEBINAR35 for 35% off any of my courses, all of my courses, the whole school subscription, whatever you like, and that code is good until July 1st. Um, so Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, if you don't know, is an ever-growing library of dog show and grooming knowledge. So our online courses, our videos, you don't just get the video once, you can see it over and over and over again at your leisure. Um, we have videos, diagrams, ebooks um, on grooming, handling, conditioning your dog. We have one on Shetland Sheepdogs, on Newfies, lots of different things. So again, use the code WEBINAR35 for 35% off. Um, this. So again, I would really, really like to thank Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, I Envy, and Angels Grooming Apparel for being the sponsors of this webinar. Please visit them. Please use the discount codes we gave you. There's no reason not to use the discount code. It's there for you. Please tell them you would like to see more webinars and what you'd like to see them on. Um, please tell us what you'd like to see webinars on. You can visit me on Wednesday. Um, we have another two hour webinar and this one is on different scissoring techniques. So before um, I sign off here, we have a few minutes left. I'm gonna get to our Q and A. Um, so the first question um, is, Hot spots can they be pre prevented by grooming? Yes, Kathy, absolutely hot spots can be prevented by grooming. Um, hot spots typically are caused by not grooming them enough, right? So the skin gets inflamed. The other one reason why people think um, that hot spots are um, caused by grooming is because they don't dry their dog properly. So I noticed on your next question that you have a Labrador and definitely with a Labrador, they have that really, really thick coat. And if you don't dry them, that's why they get hot spots because they have a softer undercoat, their coat is water repellent. So it's like holding in any dampness that you do once you get the water under that water repellent coat, it, ho it holds that dampness in and that's why labs get hot spots. Um, I had a friend that had a really, one of the top specialty winning Labradors here in Canada and he was always getting hot spots and she wasn't a groomer and I said do you dry him and she's like no I never dry him and I'm like that's why he's getting hot spots you have to dry them get all of that water pushed out of the coat and 
make, you know, one thing about using the force dryer on them is that you can see down to the skin so you can start to see where the hot spot's coming up. I would immediately treat it with peace and kindness spray. I would then put them back up on the table twice a day and just where you saw that hot spot coming in on a dry coat, open up the coat with the forest dryer and spray the peace and kindness in there to really prevent and help that hot spot from absolutely not happening. So Kathy, I'm not sure what you said. Can you use that on a Labrador? It was 1235. I think this came in when you were using the stone on a stick. Yeah, so definitely stone on a stick is something that I would use on a Labrador. There is nothing here that I use today that I wouldn't also use on a Labrador. Stone on a stick is great, again, for taking out that undercoat. Um, it's really going to do a good job for you. So thank you, Kathy, for your questions. And unfortunately, that is all of the time we have to share with you right now. Um, so. In closing, I would like to say a huge thank you to our sponsors, Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, I Envy, and Angels Grooming Apparel. And I would like to thank all of you for joining me for this one hour today. I know that the world is kind of a crazy place right now. And, you know, if we can just do something to be together and to learn something about our pets and how to be more successful in the grooming industry and more successful at dog shows, that's why we are here. If you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to send them to me at Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. Dot com. You can also find our Leading Edge Dog Show Academy page on Facebook, and we would love to see you there and help you with any further questions. So without further ado, thank you so much, and we will see you soon in another webinar. Bye-bye.